You're watching Sun Valley News and I'm your host, Dana Foster. Today, as you know, we've been talking about this new petition that has been, that is available at the village of Cash Creek. And today we're speaking with our MP, Brad Viss. Thank you so much. Now you do know about this petition. So could you tell us a little bit about what is the objective of this petition and just some, maybe some background information about it? Yeah, well, uh, first off, uh, Dana, this is my first time on the new uh, Sun Valley News Channel. And I'm so pleased to see what you've started here today and to provide more coverage for uh, Indigenous people living in the interior of British Columbia and to provide, secondly, a more rural perspective on some news stories. So I'm just super pumped that you've launched this initiative and I look forward to uh, speaking with you on issues relevant uh, to the Ashcroft Cash Creek area uh, moving forward. So congratulations on that just before we get going. Thank you. Um, uh, I am looking down on my notes here to make sure I get some of this stuff right. Um, but as you know, uh, marijuana was legalized in uh, 2016. Uh, the purpose of this petition is not to discuss the legality of marijuana. Uh, the purpose of this petition is to address a loophole, a loophole in medical marijuana regulations. Um, under our under our rules, there are there are large scale growers. We've we've seen a lot of them, especially where I'm at right now in the Fraser Valley, um, who are subject to all sites uh, all sets of protocols and licenses. Um, but there was a second stream created um, uh, for personal and designated growers who are subject to little to no regulation and are rarely monitored and who make up the majority of the problematic grow ops like we've seen in uh, Cash Creek uh, very recently. Um, so across my riding, people have been raising this issue with me in, in every single corner about well, what's taking place. Um, <clears throat> and what it is, is that there's been a, a huge increase in the number of um, medical marijuana licenses from 2016, but our local police and uh, our local RCMP officers or police forces don't have the uh, legislative authority uh, to, to regulate it like they would with a licensed grow op. And so that's creating problems and nightmares for parents. Like in Cash Creek, it's near the school. Um, I, I heard one story from my colleague um, who, uh, Diane Finley in Ontario, where she, in, and in, in her constituency, uh, a, a parents uh, were subject to an interview by child services in Ontario because the child went to school and there was a neighborhood grow up uh, near their house and it made the child's clothes smell like marijuana and the school was so concerned that they called child services. Um, so th this isn't a partisan issue. Um, this is an issue. We need to change the regulations to subject medical marijuana grow ops uh, to the same or, or, or a, a form of regulation uh, that would prevent them from operating um, in way in neighborhoods in ways that dis um, disturb people's everyday life. Um, and the big problem, of course, is that people can produce much more marijuana than they actually can uh, consume themselves. Um, and so there's a lot of issues about whether what this marijuana is being used for and the impact that's having on different communities. Sorry, that was a mouthful. <laughs> um, so how, how, how was something like this approved within our community in the first place? If there was those concerns, why are we here today? Well, well, actually, the Canadian Chiefs of Police back in 2016 cautioned the uh, standing committees in Parliament about the legislation, um, about the, legal, the, the legislation that led to the legalization of marijuana. And under the legislation, it divulged a lot of responsibilities um, from the federal government to, uh, to provinces or municipalities. And it was up to those municipalities, like in the case of Cash Creek, to um, ensure enforcement. But it happened so quickly, a lot of municipalities don't have the bylaws to address it. And in some cases, um, many um, people in police enforcement believe that uh, municipal bylaws won't even go far enough. Um, right now, meta, um, 
uh, Health Canada is the one that um, maintains the list of licenses, but under the current rules, RCMP um, can't access those licenses readily and they don't know who's producing the marijuana. Um, so it's really, I think in this case, it was a, it was a, a result of a legislation that didn't foresee some very evident problems, even though expert witnesses told them they should be doing something different. Now, are these, um, are these, are these entities also providing jobs locally within our communities? Is, is that something that um, might be of concern if this were to be shut down? Is it, is it that people are wanting this to be shut down or is this something that they just want things to be done? Generally speaking, I don't believe that a, and I might, I, I believe I'm correct, but I'll, I'll have to verify this point, but for a personal medical marijuana license, you wouldn't be able to employ someone legally uh, to produce your personal marijuana. I have no problem with people running marijuana shops that are regulated or industrial facilities that are subject to noise restrictions that are subject to air filtration. The problem is, is that people are using medical marijuana licenses as a loophole towards industrial production. And without proper bylaws and without the laws being and without the regulations being in place, the same standards that we hold for the industrial producers are not being upheld for these um, personal licenses. And there's now we're seeing lots of people upset about that. What would you need from the Grow Up organization? What sort of changes would you need from them to to see this petition to go to to go away what would you uh well what i what i need to see is um what i want and what a lot of parliamentarians want is for the minister of health uh to work with the minister of justice to amend the regulations so that um licenses are properly regulated um we also uh it's incumbent upon provinces and municipalities to put in place bylaws uh, to ensure that industrial marijuana production, which I'm not at all questioning, but that it's done in appropriate places, um, say perhaps not near an elementary school, uh, to avoid the uh, noise and uh, smell issues that come along with it. Mm -hmm. and, and to be on, maybe you can answer this question. I, I have not heard whether the facility in Cash Creek that's in question is a medical license or an industrial license. I'm not sure. That's actually my next step. So hopefully here on Sun Valley News, we'll find out a little bit more from the other side as well moving forward. So we should be able to get some of those answers as well. Yeah. Um, my, my question is from, from local citizens, what have the conversations been with them and yourself and, and even with um, uh, the village of Cash Creek, what are some of the conversations and concerns that you've been having with our, our local or local citizens? Well, for a lot of people, uh, they're not opposed to marijuana consumption. They just don't want to have to smell it when they go about their day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to have the production close to uh, in, in, the, in the middle of the, of the village. And so people are concerned about what it, uh, the location of, the, of this one in question. I haven't visited it yet. I'm coming up in uh, early February. Okay. Um, and, uh, the, and the fact that it's close to the school, the biggest the biggest thing I'm hearing is from all of the parents in the school uh, about the impact it has on their, uh, or possibly could have on their kids. They just don't want their kids smelling marijuana production. And I think parents have the right to, um, uh, to ensure their children are not smelling uh, marijuana. Have you been in, in contact with the organization at all personally? I have not yet, but it is on my list of things to do. Um, I started this petition even before I knew about the one in Cash Creek. Uh, but when uh, my constituents there heard about this and started raising this with me, um, I immediately shared it with them uh, because I believe uh, rules need to be changed to and and um, rules need to be changed to um, ensure that we all get along. And um, I believe that the village of Cash Creek is looking very closely at amending their um, bylaws uh, to, uh, to account for the fact that uh, uh, marijuana production is legal, but needs to be uh, treated like other industries and um, placed accordingly under zoning bylaws. And what effects do these grow ups, uh, negative effects do these grow ups have on communities? 
Well, I, I can't speak for the one specific. Well, the one here in, in Cache Creek, what I what the what the citizens are telling me is that it's the smell. It's that it's unsightly to be in right in the right in the middle of the village and that they don't want their children around it. And I think those are valid concerns. Um, what my petition ad is addressing um, also is where grow ups take place in residential neighborhoods or in other cases where it's close to in Abbotsford, there's a grow up that's close to a school and that's been a big problem as well. Um, so just um, making sure that people's rights are, are respected, like uh, to, be, to not have to, to smell it or be subject to it because it's a sensitive issue for a lot of people. And what sort of action and steps are you hoping to get from local residents here? Well, I think I should probably first start and talk about what steps I'm taking because I'm their representative and there's been an outcry about this matter. Um, so on November 3rd, I, I joined a, a number of my colleagues and outlined, um, and I can send you a copy of these letters after, um, uh, outlined uh, the fact that this isn't a partisan issue, but we need to get this loophole covered uh, as it relates to, to medical marijuana licenses um, uh, to ensure that uh, they're not infringing on other people's uh, well-being. And um, we're asking the Minister of Health to look closely at this issue in good faith. And then um, I sent a second additional letter solely from my riding. And then thirdly, after um, a lot of people raised this with me in the fall, I drafted the petition, that's, which is the subject of our call today, which gives me the ability to stand up for uh, constituents who signed the petition um, on their behalf in Parliament uh, to elevate this issue and to make sure it's getting attention. And with a petition, a formal petition through the House of Commons, the government is required to give a response after. And so then that way we can, I can hold the government accountable uh, to addressing this regulatory deficit. And this isn't something just happening in conservative ridings. This is happening in, in liberal and new democratic and green party ridings as well, um, where constituents are just as concerned about, um, about their neighborhood and the um, and the smell, the, which is usually the biggest thing that I hear from people, is that it's just not nice to smell, and people don't want to have that smell in their homes if they're not smoking marijuana. All right, and so the the steps to accessing the petition is is what you're looking. Oh, okay. For. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in terms of accessing the petition, um, people can go to bradvis.ca, and I have a copy online. Um, I'll mail it to anyone who asks for a copy as well. Um, they just got to call my office at six zero four. 814-5710 and I can send forward a petition um, but they can print it uh, from my website as well and then once you get 25 signatures um, I recommend getting a few more so maybe print off a few pages um, but I, if you get 35 or 40 signatures um, send that to my office po post it free it doesn't cost anything and then I can and then I will have that certified by the table office in parliament and uh, uh, we'll raise the petition. And if I get some now, I'll be able to do it when I go back to Ottawa for the first time uh, the week of February 15th. Um, I like to do them in person. Parliament starting before that, but now under the COVID restrictions, we're not there every single week and we work online on Zoom like we're doing right now. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. And then glad to hear that you're gonna be coming here locally as well. We'll be sure to touch in with you as well. Um, just as we wrap things up, is there anything else that you would like to add about the petition to our viewers? Um, just that in good faith, I'm trying to uh, address an issue that the residents of Cash Creek raised with me. I hear your concerns um, and I wanna do something about it. Thank you so much. Thank you.